Well, it would make a nice change from like all of the really, really old James Bond films that were all really predictable. Like the ones where it would always, at some point, James Bond would sit down in a room with the supervillain who would be playing his piano and he'd be saying something like, Oh, Mr. Bond, it's good to finally meet you. Also, if you're a secret agent, why does the bad guy know your name? <laughs> secret, the first word. And then, and then he always meets a girl, and the name, she was a Russian spy, and she, her name is always, I'm going to suck your Nikolotovich, or something like that. I like it. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's a, you know what, we, we, we could make this film happen. <laughs> I think the reason, though, that, uh, the, the, the reason, first of all, that Meghan Markle would make a, a good Bond girl is because... Back in the days of the old James Bond films, the Bond girls were all very two-dimensional. They were all literally meant to be there as the sort of eye candy on the side. They were meant to be very, very sort of appealable and lovable. And if there's one thing that I've learned from the British public is that they don't really like her. <laughs> so that solves that one. Uh, second, Jeremy Clarkson's James Bond. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't think that would work at all, because have you seen Jeremy Clarkson trying to get out of a car on the Grand Tour recently? <laughs> but I'm not being funny, but if he's chasing down a terrorist and then the car explodes and all of a sudden there's a gunfight and he's got to jump out of it, yeah, we all know Daniel Craig was getting on a bit, but at least he could get out of the car. Mm. Jeremy Clarkson would be shot before he got out of the car, which for some people, I suppose, would be a victory. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs>